Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Really exciting opportunity today. I'm going to sit down and do a long form interview with Jay Vine, Neuro alumni, uh, Vuelta España stage podium taker and just general character. Lots of questions I wanted to ask him about the whole experience. What I'll do is I'll put some chapter markers down the bottom so if you want to skip to one of the topics that we talk about, feel free to do that. Alternatively, jump on the trainer, put this on and go for it because uh, I'm really looking forward to this and hopefully we can uh, get something out of the man himself. So that's enough of me. Let's cross over to Jay. Should we pick up where we left off a few months ago? Yeah, sure. State your name. Um, name is Jay Vine. Current shoe size? Current shoe size. Uh, 46 wide in the Shimano's. Threshold? Depending on the test, 430. <laughs> Current Netflix series that you are streaming? Ooh, uh, it's not a Netflix series, but it's um, the... Oh, what's it called? Uh, the soccer player, the soccer... Oh, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, nice. Yeah. Second season? Second season, yeah, yeah. We love that show. It's just such a good feel-good show. We, yeah. Yeah, look, I've got a couple of questions, and, and look, this is just... This is meant to just be a bit more of a chat, but I, I it's kind of the boring stuff that interests me a bit. It was only December last year, and we were sitting around at Tweed, killing time, watching rubbish on Netflix, you know, wondering, oh, I wonder what happens, like, when you're on tour, grand tours. Well, like, yeah. you can tell me now. So yeah. that, that sort of interests me. Like, what's, this, what's a day, what's a day look like? Uh, usually about an 8 o'clock, 7.45 to 8 o'clock get up. So not crazy early, but considering the race is usually starting at 1.00 damn early mm. <laughs> because in that time we've got to factor in uh, a health check in the morning and we've only got one doctor so eight riders all trying to get blood pressure weight um, oxygen saturation temperature all that sort of stuff uh, is a bit time consuming so after that straight to breakfast um, and that's usually four hours before the start. So we're needing another meal or another small like carver, carving meal before we actually go racing. And then we're on the bus. So suitcases are usually 30 minutes after breakfast if we're changing hotel. And we changed hotel pretty much 15 times. Um, we were really lucky at the start. We stayed in the same hotel for four days straight at Burgos because it was all raced around the same, the same, same city. And then it's straight into, straight into the bus for probably about an hour, hour and a half on average transfer, which then leads into signing. Depending on where you are on the GC, depends on how early you have to get to the start because the signing starts about an hour before. And there was a few days where we were the lowest ranked in GC. So we had to get there an hour before the start, sign on. Um, they've got all the sponsors there. It's, it's, it's a pretty cool sort of atmosphere. They've got the media there as well. So they grab you for an interview or whatever as you're leaving the stage. And then it's team meeting time in the bus because there's, there's no time after, like, we're talking, we're not talking baby 110 kilometer stages here or 90 kilometer kermises. They're, they're proper, proper stages. And some of them, I think the longest stage of the race was, well, for me, not for Bodgley, but for me was six hours, just over six hours. That might have, might have started a little earlier as well. So from 12 o'clock, we're talking about a six o'clock. That's, that's usually when Brie and I are having dinner. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome so, to Spain. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a fairly late sort of finish to then plug in an extra hour to an hour and a half travel to the different hotel. Massage is immediate. 
the 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 evening cycle is very very rushed it's it's sitting down waiting for the bus to get there or the car if you're lucky enough to finish not in Gruppetto you actually get into the bus sooner to shower because you don't want to be sitting in dirty wet kit for for an hour and a half shower into a car and the car wisps you away a lot quicker than the bus does to the hotel and dinner is usually not till like 9 p.m and also the other the other tricky thing is so you've got to fit in a, a small post-race meal so you you, you got to fit in your 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 recovery shake immediately post stage then with 45 minutes to an hour later which is usually done on the drive and a small carby meal to sort of replenish some stuff because you can't eat enough like there's not enough time before mm. that to eat enough and then dinner is between 8 30 and 9 and you can't eat you can't absorb all the stuff that you put in your stomach in the one sitting no so you're then having a small proteiny thing right before you go to bed so that your stomach actually has time to absorb the things that you're putting into it. Mm. Uh, so it's it's literally you're playing, you're chasing your stomach as it's emptying to fill it with more stuff so that you get the absorption. Yeah. Because there's no point putting 3,000 calories worth of protein in your stomach for breakfast and going, oh, that's, that's my calories and protein for the day because it's not yeah. going to absorb it all. All right, you sort of touched on it, but I think Jesse would shoot me if we didn't talk a little bit of nutrition. So I'd, I'd love to know what it, what it does look like, like on and off the bike for you. I'd also really like to know how precise they are with it now. I'd probably break it down into two, two parts, like on the bike and yeah. off the bike. And the on the bike really does change depending on the Grand Tour. So the on the bike would for, for the for the volta was more uh more solid based mainly because you are getting so much fluid in through the bottles and we could rely on more carbs through through just pure drinking so you didn't want to be having a lot of gels and you wanted some solids in your stomach otherwise after three weeks of drinking nothing but energy drink, you, your, your stomach's not going to be very happy. So I think I was going through, on the six-hour stage, I went through like 10 or 11 bottles, uh, 600 mil bottles of fluid. And I think there was probably an even split, five carbohydrate bottles, five bottles of just plain water because it's... You know, that's a phenomenal amount of, um, of liquid that you're drinking, nearly five liters, and then still rocking up on the bus two kilos lighter than what we, we left at. That then dictates how much electrolytes you need to drink post-stage as well. So they were fully hydrating us and trying to get as much fluid into us as we could post-stage uh, within that first hour. So not only do you have your recovery shake, but you've also got your hydration drink that you mm -hmm. need to drink sometimes sometimes i had two liters of this stuff that i needed to consume in the first hour was that a carbohydrate thing or or a like um, oh, just pure electrolytes electrolytes okay um to, to replenish all that stuff just while you're on the bike and while you are taking bottles are they are they aiming to get the 100 grams an hour of carbs in through majority bottle then no, so for the first for the first hour we were, the first two hours we were, because that's generally when we were racing. But you got to remember the, the the pro peloton is not like an NRS race. You don't necessarily need a hundred grams an hour to fuel for for what we were doing. The some of the some of the stages. I, for for, for four, four or five hours, I only burnt barely 3,000 calories. Mm. So you didn't, you didn't need to, to be always eating. But for the first hour, 
it's well over 1200, 1300 calories. Like, because the racing was so hard to get in the breakaway. And yeah, in, in, in that, we, we basically aim for 85 to 80 to 85 for a non working day the full hundred if you were planning on going and doing a hard race. So for Jasper, if he was sprinting or if I was um, going in the breakaway, that's what we, that's basically what we aim for. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff was taken on the bike. So we, we left the start line with everything we need for the stage for an 85 day. And if we needed any more, we could grab it. So that's, that's gels. Gels. Yeah. And I suppose you mentioned post-race in terms of, you know, carby meal. It's really not fancy. No. It's, we're talking mm. rice and maybe some egg. Yep. And yep. we have the option of putting some ketchup on it. Yeah. Like, it's pretty, pretty basic. It's, yeah. The the meal, the, the dinners that we had, so we had a chef um, come on tour with us to try and avoid any unsavory salmonella. Uh, situations, uh, which I've been unfortunately have um, experienced, but the yes, the chef made tried to make our meals as unique as he could, uh, since you're working basically with two forms of carbohydrate, three forms of carbohydrates: bread, pasta, and rice. And that was really nice. Like I have done so in Turkey. They basically, the buffets essentially just served us rice and pasta with a curry and a tomato sauce. Three weeks. Never yep. done anything like that. I'm interested oh. about the fatigue of it. Mm. And because I kind of spoke to you a little bit during it and you were like, oh, I'm not feeling that good today. I remember one time I spoke to you and you went, oh, I'm not feeling that good today. Next minute, you're in the break. So I am kind of interested to know, like, how how everything affected your body as the three weeks unfolded. So it's 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 different for me because I was at Racing GC. The first, first week's almost irrelevant. I felt fine all week. Uh, stage seven, when I got in that breakaway, um, the... The threshold was right up there. I mean, I did 420 watts for the, the first 20 minutes, and that day was like a 280 TSS day. So that was my first proper day racing in the breakaway, and nothing had dropped off then. The following two days is when the struggle sort of hit me, uh, especially that stage nine where Caruso just rode by himself for the yeah. last 70 kilometers. Uh, that was a really hard start and it's the, the actual snappiness. Like we're talking single file where, with, with 40 kilometers into the stage at this point, racing on highways, the slightly downhill with a slight tailwind. So we're doing 60 plus and the breakaway is not going and you know that you've got 120 k's to go you can't drop now and you're in the wheel trying to be as small as possible doing 580 yeah just to hold the wheel yeah. and then the, the 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 pace lifts off just ever so slightly and you're down to 450 and you get that burn through the legs that is what kills you the most yeah for, for me personally i found it quite more than comfortable that once I was dropped doing 330 up the up the climbs for hours not 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 an issue and that sort of theme continued on after I do a really hard effort the day before the next day was pretty much a write-off yeah okay uh the the numbers all came back for those days that I went mm -hmm. all out mm-hmm but the next day was pretty much a write-off, except for the uh, the time trial. Um, all I can say is I probably didn't go super high in the in the zones, so it probably didn't give me that burning feeling. It was sort of a, a threshold effort. Yep. 
and the day after the rest, the second rest day. That second rest day ruined me and I was, I've never felt more, I'd never felt closer to quitting a bike race apart from my food poisoning ride than that day from kilometer 10. And the breakaway went pretty quickly. It was like the breakaway went at like 20 Ks in. Mm. From kilometer 10, I was last wheel and dropping on every little town center because when you're going through a town center, yeah, everyone breaks, the peloton stretches out, the guys are going through the corner at 340, 350 watts on the front. So they're up to speed back to 45 k's an hour, no issues. And you, you haven't even started braking for the corner. Yeah. And then you come, go around the corner and you're snapping at 700 watts for 10 seconds to try and get back in the wheel. That just, that day was awful. I ended up dropping with 10 k's to go on the final climb. Just awful. But the following two days in the mountains, I was with front group for, yeah. for most of the day. So, yeah. Do you think, because I was going to ask you a little bit maybe about learnings and that type of thing, do you think rest a um, routine might be something that... Absolutely. So yeah. for me personally, if it's going to be a hard day like that with lots of really sharp surges, I need to be doing efforts during my, my rest yeah. day. Any Any other obvious learnings, do you think, that you'd take away from it? The funny thing that I, I noticed... Like, obviously, you need to try and save as much energy as you can, right? That, 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 that's the whole idea of a Grand Tour. You're, you're not putting yourself in the wind unless you absolutely have to. And I noticed toward, at the start of the race, every, all the GC guys would go to the bathroom by themselves, like with teammates around them, but they, they generally pull over. Towards the end of the, the race, so the final week and possibly even most of the second week, wouldn't even leave the front 30 of the bunch. They'd pull over to the side and they'd get pushed along to go to the bathroom. But they, that, no, that back 100 riders, I'm not going anywhere near them. Everything is delivered to them personally. Mm. And, I mean, that's, that's, that's the difference between our team and a GC team. Yeah. Jasper's not afraid to grab to grab a bag, but obviously on a sprint day, he's not going to be going back to the car to get bottles. Quick intermission. If you are enjoying this video, make sure you do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It makes a massive difference for us to maybe try and do a few more of these type of long things with some different characters as it goes along, different guys in the team, different people in the cycling industry. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. All right, quickly, let's talk tech. So obviously you're on the Canyon rigs, very nice, beautiful bikes. Did you ever find yourself looking at, you know, obviously they're number one, sponsor approved, et cetera, et cetera. But did you ever find yourself looking at any of the other team setups and going, oh, that's nice? Not so much on the road. On the, on the time trial stuff, that's when I started ogling people, really. The, and just the different ways that people were, and the different brands' ways of doing things, like the skin suits. You know, some some sponsors were doing like mesh mesh on leading edges, whereas other 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 brands were doing like full no seams on leading edges. And then you had you know the bikes. Obviously, there were you know the, the bikes, the the disc wheels all that sort of stuff, I think. And then the front ends, the, you know, some, some of the Ineos guys just had standard circular extensions, whereas yeah. other, other guys had full carbon mounted, sorry, molded extensions. So yeah, that's, that, that was the definitely the stuff that I um, was, was eyeing off. Disc or rim? Uh, disc. I'm actually keen on discs now, especially on time trial bikes. Like I rode discs on the road bike all the all race, and then rim on the time trial bikes, and the time trial bikes don't stop. And yeah, well, we didn't need them to yeah. stop. 
<laughs> no, no, you don't need them in Australia to stop. You just go out 10 kilometers, turn around, come back. So. I wanted you to maybe have a chance to, to, to describe the last three weeks in your own words. People jumping to conclusions, forming opinions about you who don't know you. It seemed very strange. So I just kind of, yeah, thought maybe. Yeah, I guess the last three weeks is definitely the hardest thing I've ever done on a bike. The amount of sheer focus that you have to have every every day to make sure that, you know, you, you're fed correctly, you, you have hydrated, you aren't going to run into the wheel in front of you. Every, every, every 10 seconds, there is a near crash somewhere in the peloton from start to finish. So you can add up the near crashes throughout the race. Sometimes that, evolve, that, that does devolve into a crash. You've got to be switched on and focused the entire race. And just the sheer fatigue that you get. Like the last week, I think, I think most people were going, all right, we're counting down the kilometers to the finish of this bike race. So it's definitely, and, and you've also got to remember, it was my first world tour race. It was my 16th race day that I started my first world tour race on in Europe this year. So there was a lot of pressure to sort of learn and find that magic bullet of how do we, we ride with 22 world tour teams instead of just seven. And it's, I'm going to finish it off with it's, it was the funnest time I've ever had in a bike race. Like some of the best moments were the days where I was riding with Jasper in Gruppetto. And it was my job to get him from dropped to the finish in in the time limit like yeah that's cool that just i felt so proud to have this guy that's won two stages you know who's been professional for four years now who's done so much more but it was my job yeah to get him for that that was a very proud moment of mine yeah did you find the noise outside the race uh like was that fatiguing as well like how did you kind of cope with that i suppose were you able to shut it out yeah, the hard thing for me was saying the same thing four times a day. Like some of those days, like I t- I call Bree every day and explain what had happened, how I was feeling. Then it was my social media post. Then it was the catch ups with Matt. Then it was the GCN videos that I did for for their show. And then not every day, but some days in the morning after sign on, I'd have to say it another two times to two different media organizations. Mm. Um, the the noise from the outside of the race, I probably I'm not, not gonna say I did, but I probably did more media than outside the GC guys than most other riders in the race. But it was nice to like some of the riders didn't have a clue who I was. Mm. You know, they just saw, oh, there's this this bloke who rode off with Bardet on stage, whatever. Oh, you were riding the front on stage six, or you know, oh, you know, oh, you're an Aussie. Uh, how? Who are you? And I'm the Swift Academy winner. Oh, wow. Okay, I've heard about you. But you know, it's 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 funny that none of that outside noise penetrates the riders. Yeah. But the riders are literally just riding their bikes. Yeah. And that, <laughs> but that's always the thing with cycling, isn't it? It's like at the end of the day, like when everyone just throws a leg over their bike and starts racing it, like everyone's equal. It doesn't really matter like how many grand tours that guy's won or, you know, if you can drop him, then you can drop him. It's, yeah. it's, it's that kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, like I really appreciate you saying that sort of stuff because, yeah, it, it's – it became very frustrating for us to 
to have people jumping to your conclu- jumping to conclusions I think about about you and about your where you came from and your skill set and all this kind of thing. Well, I think the when, perfect example is some organization wrote an article of me and then put the wrong photo. <laughs> it's like you do not have a clue what's going on, do you? Mm. Like okay, and when he, when they were told about it, they didn't even change it. It was just no, that's that, that's done. Yeah. We're on to the next thing. We're we're talking about Lopez quitting the race, you know. What are you guys thinking over that sort of autumn winter period? Have you heard anything about racing? I know you mentioned you really enjoyed Andorra. Do you think it's that's feasible that you might move there? Where where are you guys at? So I'm going to try and aim to get selected for a Lombardia start, which is the 10th of October. But outside of that, the yeah, I'll be taking four weeks off the bike. I won't be coming back to Australia. It's going to be too difficult. Maybe my parents can come over here um, over Christmas. We'll see what happens with restrictions. But the... Yeah, we've got a holiday booked for a week in Andorra, which most people are going to be like, you're going to Andorra for a holiday, really? Well, we liked it, okay? Um, so, yeah, we're going for a holiday in Andorra, La Masana, for a week. No socials, not looking, not posting, just Bree and I having coffee, looking at mountains. And we're going to go for hikes. Hopefully not get attacked by bears because there's bears. People say mm-hmm. Australia is full of animals that kill you. Well, all the animals that kill you in Australia are small, whereas these ones are big. These are big ones. I, I will actually say, like, going from my first nationals two years ago, right, then you were in that race, that, you know, I was hearing Go Jay on the side of Mount Bunyan, and I'm still convinced they were yelling at Jay McCarthy. But... <laughs> Going from that and having that little, oh, someone knows who I am, you know, to genuinely having multiple people during the final time trial, but also during some of the mountain days when I was getting dropped, calling out, you know, go Jacobson, go DeMar, go Jay Vine. And it's Jay Vine. It's not just the one name. It's it's both names, obviously. Pretty awesome. And then to have that sign put up on the side of the road of get wrecked, Jay, that was just some little thing that Bree and I did back in Australia and to have that come up, that was pretty pretty special. In a sport that doesn't have many really cool, interesting stories, yours is a freaking cool, interesting story, do you know? Mm. And like, you know, you can string two words together now. Uh, <laughs> so it makes it, makes it all, that, all that, that much better. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where I where would I have learnt the skills to be able to talk on camera. Don't know. No, no. I've drawn a blank. Sorry. Alrighty, mate. I will leave you to it. Uh, now I know you've announced that you are signing with uh, Alperson next year. However, we have just released the EOIs for twenty twenty two. So. <laughs> Just hold off on signing anything official just yet. All right. Okay. 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 I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's a buyout clause that we can. We oh, can we can sweat it out. We can get <laughs> Luke onto it. It's all good. All right, yeah. guys. Pleasure. Best thing about doing this vlog is you just work with professionals who just appear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, professional extras. Yeah, big thanks to Jay, big thanks to Bree for making that happen. And uh, yeah, I mean, I know many of you sort of sent me questions and everything. We all kind of feel a bit part of his journey, don't we, Liz? Yeah. Yeah, very much. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool that he's gone back to his roots and uh, still willing to chat to us slop vloggers. Alrighty, guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And uh, please do that. We're still less than 50% who are watching and subscribing. I can't stress what a difference that makes. Alrighty, talk to you soon. The pain inside don't want to feel it. So I pull up inside my cup and I just sit till I can't feel it.